Average wind speed over the 285 days taken up by excavation and confinement work was 40 kilometers per hour, with gusts of up to 70. Combined with heavy rain, this forced work to be halted on several occasions. Eventually, 31,314 truck journeys were needed to take 339,405 cubic meters of HCH contaminated material to the safety landfill. The total breakdown of this material is as follows. HCH contaminated soil, 54.2%. Steel shop slag, 10.1%. Foundry sand, 8.2%. Inert material, 7.4%. Pyrite ash, 5.2%. Steel shop dust, 2.3%. Municipal solid waste, 1.7%. Tar sludge, 1.7%. Industrial waste, 1.6%. Mining sterile, 1.5%. Hydrocarbons, 0.3%. River sludge, 0.3%. Hardcore used in internal roadways, 4.9%. Others, 0.6%. Capping the safety landfill prevents contaminant particles from getting out and water from getting in. It also provides a base for the layers of material used for landscape remediation. The capping system used involved the following layers of material from bottom top. A geotextile separation layer, a drainage layer, a bentonite blanket, polythene sheeting, a puncture-proof geotextile layer, a drainage layer, clay soil, and topsoil. Capping was completed with the building of perimeter channels to collect rainwater runoff. Landscape remediation involved hydro-seeding the whole top of the landfill, with special emphasis on access points and unstable areas, which were planted out with native species of bushes and trees, including cherry trees, which are typical of the area. The stilling well set up on the river Borotsako was landscaped with rock fill and water plants to look like a pond. A garden was planted on top of the landfill as a recreation area for local people. The treatment plant is designed to clean up the contaminated water generated during the filling of the confinement cell due to rainwater filtering through the waste. With the capping of the landfill, leachates are expected to decrease gradually to nothing. Leachates are treated with a reverse osmosis method. As shown in the illustration, this means essentially separating the contaminant particles by exerting pressure on a semi-permeable membrane, generating two flows of water, the concentrate containing the contaminant particles, which is recirculated back into the process, and a flow free from contaminants, which permeates the membrane and is discharged directly into the river Borotsako downstream from the landfill. The success of a project such as the construction of the safety landfill at Argaladio depends to a large extent on how the work involved is performed. In this case, state-of-the-art technology from various fields of research was used and technical and environmental risks were minimized. The results of quality control in general and checks on the geosynthetics used in particular can be summed up by saying that the site's carefully designed meticulously implemented quality plan has enabled it to comply with the most stringent international technical standards. From the outset, Iobe took up the challenge of meeting the monitoring requirements for the work. Special emphasis was placed on health and safety, since personnel often had to work in direct contact with HCH waste. 
The team in charge of monitoring watched this point especially closely, and just how successfully they did their job can be seen from the fact that medical examinations of those workers most directly exposed, held after the work was completed, revealed no trace whatsoever of contaminants. The measures implemented were fully effective. To ensure exhaustive monitoring of the quality of ground and surface water, seven piezometers were built and fitted with continuous measurement recorders. Regular measurements were also taken throughout the monitoring system for the waters in the area around the dump site and safety landfill. In line with the requirements of the Department of Land Use and the Environment. Air quality was monitored by five fixed particle and gas monitoring units set up at strategic points close to the major excavation sites and around the safety landfill. The main vectors taken into account were wind direction and temperature. As can be seen in the simulation, the average figure for maximum cumulative HCH levels on a single day for those living closest to the landfill was 175 nanograms per cubic meter. This figure is 95 times lower than the reference level of 16,700 nanograms used in international legislation. All other measurements were well below this level. This work has resulted in the remediation of 24 sites contaminated by waste from the manufacturing of the insecticide lindane and other industrial waste which posed a threat to the health of local people and ecosystems on land which could have been used for farming and commercial or industrial development. Furthermore, the project has recovered an area of damaged land which was seriously affecting the water courses and air quality around the old Argaladio dump site, thus improving the quality of life of local people. With this action, taken through the publicly owned environmental management company, EOBE, the Basque Government Department of Land Use and the Environment has completed a cycle of measures which began six years ago with the Bilbao Airport Safety Landfill, continued with the building of the HCH elimination plant in Ancio Baracaldo, and culminated with the construction of the complex structure we have seen here. This puts an end to a long period of pollution which entailed clear risks for human health and for ecosystems and constitutes a great leap in environmental terms, contributing to the socio-economic development of the area on the left bank of the Nervion estuary and helping improve quality of life in general.